For 30 years, Captain John Hoyt had a dream career as an airline pilot. Then in 2004, he refused to fly. I thought I had Alzheimer's. I started to lose my speech. I couldn't relate to other people. I had all sorts of other issues, um, brain fog, um, word finding, memory. And I thought, what is going on? If I fly today, I'm going to kill myself, kill my passengers. This is not good. I've got to stop. And that was in 2004. I actually walked off an aircraft. Soon, Hoyt's flying career was over. He was grounded, diagnosed with chronic stress. Then he was contacted by another grounded pilot, Tristan Lorraine, who asked Hoyt to volunteer for a blood test. The results for Hoyt and 25 other grounded pilots showed the presence of tricrystal phosphates, or TCP. TCP is used on aircraft as an oil additive to prevent engine wear. It's chemically similar to a pesticide. So please now fasten your seatbelt and enjoy your flight today with Toxic Airlines. Lorraine and Susan Michaelis, also a grounded pilot, set out to publicise a film what they saw as the link between sick flight crews and cabin air. Their belief? Air contaminated by an engine made them sick. Every aircraft gets fresh air into the cabin the same way. It's drawn in through the engine and fed through the plane's air conditioning system. Lorraine and Michaela say the air can be contaminated by leaking oils to form a fine, sometimes toxic mist. Michaela says she has documented dozens of incidents and the effects on flight crews. The information and the evidence is there, the admissions from the airline industry that oil leaks and that it causes at least short-term symptoms is all there. What they don't accept is the long-term symptoms. Peter Julu is the doctor who diagnosed John Hoyt with acute traumatic brain injury. He says repeated exposure may be the problem. All the pilots that I've seen are very senior pilots. They're all captains and then been flying for over 10 years. So that is one, one thing that will tell you straight away that it needs very constant, repetitive, long-term effect. But how often does cabin air get contaminated? Britain's Civil Aviation Authority declined an interview, saying it counted just 52 aircraft fume events in the first seven months of 2009. The CAA said investigations have concluded that there was no evidence that cabin air in general or following fume events causes ill health in aircrew. The UK Department of Transport in 2006 commissioned an independent study by Cranfield University to monitor and analyse cabin air aboard BAE 146s, Boeing 757s and Airbus A319s. In all, 100 flights will be monitored. Study results won't be known until next summer. Five European airlines are allowing in-flight monitoring, but no US carriers are participating. Dr Mackenzie Ross, a neuropsychologist who's been testing pilots, fears that the study is just too small. One of the difficulties we've got is a contaminated air event is by definition um, one that shouldn't happen. So basically you're waiting for a plane to have some sort of fault. So it's a very difficult thing to really look into and there's a chance that you will, however much money you spend on it and how many, however many planes you survey, miss a contaminated air event. What's been easier to document is the presence of TCP in the blood of active pilots. Professor Clement Furlong at the University of Washington in Seattle developed the blood test. He says sometimes you can't see a fume event, but you can often smell it. A vomit smell, a wet dog smell, and then the symptoms they might experience would be headache, nausea, dizziness, shaking, tingling. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration told CNN that the concerns raised by crew members about fume events are reasonable and are being investigated. The FAA believes that the cabin environment in the vast majority of commercial flights is safe. National Air Transport Association, a trade group with more than 230 airlines, told CNN that they are aware of some very isolated cases where bleed air has been questioned. Airbus says it has very stringent cabin air purity requirements and aircraft are designed to avoid air contamination in normal operating conditions. And in an email, Boeing said that contaminant levels are generally low and that health and safety standards are met. But Boeing is redesigning air handling in the company's new Dreamliner 787 to eliminate any engine bleed air.